I'm going to teach you how to fix this DS1812 Plus in all GNAS using the repair kit available on our website. The repair kit will fix all of the common faults, including completely dead no power, and the blue light never stops blinking. First, let's open up the unit and take a closer look inside. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick. I started Nick's Electronics Repair more than a decade ago, and since then we have fixed over 27,000 devices. For the DS1812 Plus specifically, all the common faults typically occur on the motherboard, so we will completely remove it from the unit and begin our repairs there. Starting with the CMOS battery, a bad CMOS can cause a no power fault. They aren't designed to last more than 10 years. Since this device is older than that, it's likely the battery is near its end of life if it hasn't already failed. The new battery is reading about 3.2 volts DC, and the original is not even getting a reading. Now that we've replaced the CMOS battery, let's move on to the capacitor replacements. When the capacitors fail, they will cause a dead no power fault, and those are going to be on the back of the board. For this repair, we'll want to remove the plastic, and with the board in this orientation, we're going to focus on the bottom right corner. So more specifically, we're going to be focusing on C691 over here and C682 over here. So we're going to do a quick measurement. So I'm reading around 10, 11 kilo ohms and rising, but it is changing around a little bit. The important thing is we don't have a short. Let's check out C682. And that one has a similar reading. We're getting about 15 kilo ohm. It just jumped to 40. Now it's going back down. But again, point is we don't have a short. So with this motherboard, the capacitors are not defective, so they technically don't need to be replaced. However, because these do commonly fail, we are going to preemptively replace them as these may be near their end of life. For this process, we'll have to bring out the soldering iron. And I'm gonna start by flooding both sides of the capacitor with some solder. And we'll do that to both capacitors. And next, I'm going to attempt to make contact with both the left and the right side of the capacitor at the same time and knock it off. I have a little bit less space on this one, but we'll do the same process. We have solder on both sides, melting both sides at the same time. And I definitely have a little bit less space here, so it's making it a little difficult. There we go. Had to hang out on there for a little longer. Next, we'll remove the excess solder with our desolder wick. And I have a little bit of solder there. We'll remove that. And I'm going to do a quick cleanup using isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip just to remove the spent flux from both the desolder braid and the solder. And for the installation, I'm going to add solder to just one pad for each capacitor. And I'm gonna melt the pad and slide in the capacitor at the same time. Whoop. Okay, and the capacitor is locked in. We'll repeat the process with the other capacitor. And again, locked in. It's gonna rotate the board, and now we're gonna lock in the component on the other side, and again on the other one. Perfect. We're going to do a final cleanup. All right, and that looks beautiful. And finally, we can tackle the last repair, which is going to resolve the blue light blinking endlessly fault. That's going to be an issue with this DOM over here. So the DOM, which stands for Disk on Module, has an IC chip that fails and prevents the unit from booting up properly. Now, most commonly, the controller IC on the back is what fails and needs to be replaced. It's important to note that there's different versions of this DOM that use different controller ICs. The different controller ICs are not cross-compatible, so it's important that you make sure the one that we provide in our kit, which is a US Best branded chip, is an identical match with yours before you buy the kit. If you do not have the US Best chip on your DOM, then do not replace it with the one that we provide. With that said, if you do have the US Best branded chip like we do here today, then that will resolve the blue light blinking endlessly fault. So let's go ahead and show you how to replace that. You'll notice that we have some components near the chip, so we want to be very careful we don't knock these off. To begin the replacement process, I'm going to add solder to all four sides. in a little flux. For the actual removal process, I'm gonna be using both hot air and the soldering iron at the same time. And I'm just assisting with the iron, adding just a little extra heat and I'm gonna knock off the chip, and we'll use our desolder wick to remove any of that excess solder left behind. 
be careful not to melt this plastic connector. And because we added a lot of flux, let's definitely do a cleanup. And for the installation, I'm switching my iron tip and we're gonna go ahead and start by adding just a little bit of solder to the first two pins here. I'm gonna grab my replacement chip and we're gonna slide it in just like we did with the capacitors. Oh, that's too much. And I'm checking all four sides. I wanna make sure everything's lined up right. It's not quite perfect, but it's close enough. So we'll lock in a couple other pins and we'll do that again on each side. We'll add a little bit more flux. And now we can solder the rest of the pins. That looks good. zoom in a little bit more and next we're going to do a little rake. So we're going to be putting pressure on all of the pins to confirm that they're soldered correctly. If any of the pins move, it would mean that they are not soldered correctly. And it looks like we're all good. So we'll do another quick clean. Remove all of that extra flux we added. I did forget to mention orientation. We have a little circle here on the chip and you wanna make sure you match that with the pin one and triangle over here. So that does complete the installation of the repair kit. We'll install the DOM back on the motherboard and the motherboard back in the unit, do a final test and make sure everything works. All right, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. Power it on. Our blue light is blinking, our fans are spinning. So let's wait a minute and see what we get. Let's use the Synology Assistant to confirm we can detect the unit on our network. Okay, it looks like it is detectable. Now, I didn't put a disk in, so we won't fully access it, but that's okay. We can detect it, and that's what's important. If you are interested in trying to fix your DS1812+, Plus, we do have the kits available, like I mentioned, on our website, and I'll have links for that in the description down below. As well, if you don't have the tools or expertise for the installation of the kit, we can also do that for you. We offer flat rate services for the repairs of these units, which come with a one-year warranty. And again, we'll have those linked in the video description down below to our website listing. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.